Today we will be uh, to take conversation with David Goat. He have a uh, personal history, really amazing history, but he change this personal history for try help another people um david thank you so much for your time we appreciate that um i wanted you tell us a little bit about your history because it's really amazing um i really i don't want to tell the people i wanted you tell them then <laughs> <laughs> sure sure yeah um Yeah, I mean the history basically goes back, you know, before I was alive with you know my with my uh, my father and my mom. Uh, my dad is a uh, Kenneth Good, is an American anthropologist, and um, and during the mid seventies he, he went down to uh, Venezuela and uh, in the Amazonas region to study the Yanomami tribe. Um, he uh, and how that was related to warfare. And it was always supposed to be there for, for a few months, you know, to collect data and write his dissertation for his PhD program. Um, but uh, he ended up uh, falling in love with this, this tribe, just their way of life and, and, and how they were just free from all the stresses and the woes of modern society and ended up staying there for, for 12 years. Um, and, uh, and during that time, he became accepted into the village. He learned their language, learned their ways, and... And one day, the headman of the village went up to my father and said, uh, you know, you're one of us now. Um, and because you're one of us, you should have a wife. <laughs> and so my dad, um, you know, first thought, you know, this is impossible. I'll be ever taking you know, on my wife being a Westerner. But uh, um, eventually, he, he developed his relationship with his girl and, and, and fell in love. And, and he got married, according to the Yanomama custom. Um And then, uh, and then they both decided as a couple to move to uh, to the United States and to begin a young model American family and had three kids. And that's that's where I entered the story. Um, I was the oldest of three, uh, and I have a younger brother and a younger sister. I know when I when I read about your history, um, your mother she decided don't continue live here in the United States and she moved again to the uh, jungle with the Janamami tribe. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you yeah. lost the contact completely with her for how many years? Uh, um, um, how many years she was up here, or no? How many uh, years you you lost all the contact with your mother? Oh, right, right. Right, right, yeah. So, um, you know, after, uh, you know, my father and mother tried to have this kind of mom American family, uh, my mom realized that uh, when I was, well, she realized that she couldn't make it anymore in this world. So, yes, that's when I was about five years old. Um, she made that decision to uh, split off from the family, and she remained in the jungle, and I remained up here in the United States. And that was the last time I saw her. I was only five, and I didn't see her for another 20 years. Um, so during that time, I had no contact with her, and, and unfortunately, there was really no way to contact her because she's living in the middle of the jungle with no, you know, no means of communication with the outside world. Who do you take um, the decision for come back after uh, approximately 20 years, right? Do you know so? Yeah. Who who you well, took the decision? Because it's personal decision. Right. Some people maybe they will to be aggressive because my mother left, but you took in the other right. way. Yeah. Well, what happened was when when my mom left. Um, I, as a young boy, I had internalized it as abandonment. I thought that she left because she didn't want me anymore, and I thought that uh, I wasn't good enough to be her son. And um, so, growing up, I dealt with a lot of these um, uh, self-identity problems. You know, I had a self-identity crisis, and, and throughout the years, I just, just sort of harbored this hatred that I had towards my mom and my heritage, and really didn't want to have anything to do with the other mom. And I, was, I renounced my heritage, and I was really ashamed. And, but at the same time, I really missed my mom, and, and I knew that I had this unique background, but I, I just was sort of a lost you know, kid growing up in this world. And so when I was around 21, 22, I was still dealing with a lot of issues. Um, you know, I was, I was drinking a lot. I was dealing with depression. And, and, um, and so I realized that I can't keep living on like this. There's, I have to figure out a way to, uh, 
to really heal myself after 20 years of, of being ashamed and anguished. So I sort of stepped out of my comfort zone and I decided to read my dad's book. Um, I learned a little bit about Yanomama culture and then I, then I started realizing why she left. And then I came to an understanding, you know, why she couldn't live up here in America and why she had to go back home. And so when I came to that understanding, that's when um, I realized that, uh, you know, that I needed to go back. I needed to go find my mom after all these years. Uh, she's, been in the, she's been in my mind all the time, and she's a woman that, you know, that, that raised me for the first five years of my life. I had so many memories of her, and I just, I, I just missed her so much, and I realized that I needed, to, I needed to go down there. I needed to try at least, you know, find her and get in touch with my indigenous roots and, and meet my Yanomama family again. Who was this first contact again with your with your mother and also with the culture that your mother because you know it for the books but really you don't have any contact with them right before before yeah no 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 contact yeah so it, it was quite it was quite a um, you know a, a trip and it took about two years of preparation and um, I, I emailed so many different people can you help me or can you put me in touch with somebody that can help me and. Um, uh, get in touch with my mom and then I want to go down there and, and it wasn't until um, uh, a Venezuelan anthropologist her name is uh, Ortense Caballero and she, she she decided to take on the mission to take on um, you know this mission of helping me find my mom and, and, and Ortense and I met in Philadelphia and she said that she's going to help me you know with whatever she can, uh, however she can, to, to help me find my mom. And, and that's when Hortensia and I became really close, and, and she's the one that really laid the path down in my village. She found out where she is. First of all, she found out that she's alive, and I was very grateful to hear that. <laughs> and uh, she really, really helped me find my, my way to my mother. And, you know, if it weren't for Hortensia, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to find my mom. I am not. Uh, I am not clear. I read the interview that you made before. How long you will you was there? Around a month, two months? How long you spend yeah. in the jungle with your mom um, and with the community? Well, great. Um, well, I was in the Amazonas for three months. Uh, I never stayed in one spot for very long. I, I had a sort of different, different. I had different goals and different purposes to fulfill on my trip down there. One, obviously was to find my mom, I, you know, to reunite with her, and I did. But I, I knew in my heart that I wanted to be somebody that would be someday in the future to be in a position to help the Yanomama as, as a Yanomama and also as a Naba, an outsider. So I'm a Yanomama Naba, and I want to serve as this trustworthy bridge between the two cultures as they interact in the two worlds. So I traveled around a lot. I, I traveled different villages. I stayed with the Catholic missionaries. I stayed with the Protestant missionaries. I stayed in Esmeralda, got to know the military a little bit. I got to learn a little bit about the interaction between the doctors and the healthcare system that's going on. So I, I did move around quite a bit, um, but I did make re four return trips into uh, to, my, to my mother's village to stay with her. So I was, I was in the Amazonas for four months. Or, I'm sorry, three months, but I didn't stay in her village for three months. I just stayed there for maybe, you know, a couple of weeks at a time when I went to visit her. Do you, you, you plan to come back there in your future? Yes, yes I am. In fact, uh, if everything goes well, I'm applying for a grant. Um, and if everything goes well, I should be there this upcoming November. Oh, really soon? Yeah, yeah, really, really soon. So I am really excited because it's been two and a half years since I saw my mom, and I've had no contact with her. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like repeating itself again. And you know, it's, it's been really tough as I'm I'm trying to finish school and I'm trying to start you know this nonprofit, a good project, and and you know life life gets busy up here, and and sometimes it's just really difficult to try to plan your way back to the jungle, but. This time, um, I'm hoping that if everything goes well, um, I can leave by November. And this, this trip will be different. This trip will, I will just be staying uh, in my village with my mother and my Yanomama family. And all I want to do is learn how to be a little bit more Yanomama.
I want to learn how to hunt. I want to fish. I want to, I want to be able to start a garden. I want to learn more about the language. Just, just sort of spend time with my family and, and learn how to be uh, uh, a Yanomama man. Yeah, that is something that is curious. I saw the picture. Who was the communication with your mom? You have somebody translate between the language, the hair, and your English, or who who was that communication? Yeah, yeah. So when I first reunited with my mom, I had Hortensia. She um, translated from uh, Spanish to English, but we also had a bilingual Yanomama that translated from, from Yanomama to Spanish. So for, for the first one, you know, it was, it was Yanomama to Spanish and then Spanish to English. And um, so, you know, it took a long time to try to have a conversation. Um, but uh, then, then during the uh, second trip, um, I just had a, a bilingual Yanomama. And at that time, I knew enough Spanish to, to uh, understand um, uh, the translation. And then on the third time, I went completely by myself. Uh, I wow. didn't have any translator. <laughs> so, because... I know I, I wanted to get uh, 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 I wanted to be immersed in Yanomama culture without any distractions from outsiders and and, and you know because it's always it's always a disruption when you have someone going with you you know you yeah. can't really know unless you're there by yourself and that's what I wanted to do and and that's and during that trip is was my most memorable experience that I've had with my Yanomama family and and being in the jungle because it was just me and the Yanomama and nobody else and. So there was a lot of um, misunderstandings, a lot of pointing, a lot of frustration, especially when I, re I remember the women were asking me to go help them collect firewood, and, and I didn't understand them, and they just was getting very angry and frustrated, and, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, I don't understand, but um, interestingly enough, my mom started remembering English after Are you? a while. Oh my God, yeah. that is good. <laughs> Yeah, it was, because, you know, when she was in America, she was learning English, and she was getting English lessons, and, and it was amazing to me, after 20 years of not speaking English, I mean, she didn't know much, but she knew words and phrases. Maybe and basic English. One, yeah, just words and basic English, and, um, you know, and basic grammar, if that, but I remember uh, I was in my hammock one day, writing notes in my journal, and, and my mom had just got done uh, killing a boa constrictor, and And she comes back with a piece of a piece of a snake, and she just comes up to me and says, uh, uh, "Hey, do you want some snake?" In perfect English. <laughs> wow! And, uh, I was like, I was so so taken aback that my mom first I was being offered snake, but the fact that she spoke some English was is amazing. Well, yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I. Uh, um, But I did learn a lot of Yellow Mama uh, along the way that, that helped me, you know, at least communicate somewhat with my family. And then on the fourth trip, I had um, uh, the Michael Dawson, who is a Protestant missionary, and he speaks English in Yellow Mama. So that was a little bit more convenient because he directly translated Yellow Mama to English. So um, I had some help. Um, you know, there's a lot of frustrations, but... I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited and I'm happy to, to go back down so, uh, so I can learn more of the language and, and, you know, someday I'll be in a position to, to uh, have a whole conversation in Yanomama. This will happen. We don't have too much time, but I have two more questions for you and I want to please no uh, really uh, quickly answer. The first is what your dad thinking about all this situation? Did you decide come back there? Did you decide uh, meet again in your month? And the second, talk to about your organization and who the people can help. Okay, yeah. So um, my dad, when I first told my dad that I wanted to go down and find mom, he was a little surprised because he knew growing up how much that I tried to hide myself and hide my secret of being a Yanomama American. And it, and it sort of came as a surprise to him. And But he was happy for me that I was going on this trip. I think he was a little frustrated because he, he wanted to help me, but it's been 20 years since he's been in Venezuela, so he thought he doesn't have all the contacts and doesn't even know where to begin. And, but at the same time, you know, he, he supported me. He helped fund for my trip, and, um, and he was... Uh, He was just um, happy for me. I think I think he was worried, and my rest of my family was worried about 
me being in the jungle, uh, my sister used to crack a joke that, that how, how are you going to, you said, David, she said, David, how are you going to survive in the jungle if you're scared of a ladybug? <laughs> you know, and it's true. Growing up, I was very scared of bugs. And, um, and I just, I just thought, you know, I would, uh, I would deal with it when it comes, and, uh, you know, again, so now I can say that my fear of bugs and insects is, is no longer, mostly due to my experience in the jungle. Um, About and, your and organization? Who the people can my, help? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'm in, um, uh, uh, I'm in the process of, of creating a nonprofit called The Good Project, and it is a nonprofit organization, and to put it in a sentence, it's simply a... a We want to serve as a trustworthy bridge or a link between two worlds, the world of the Yanomama and other indigenous groups, remote indigenous groups that are experiencing issues surrounding um, health care or health problems and, and, and political involvement and, and, and fair trade initiatives and, and, and help serve as a link between um, their goals and then The, the influences of the outside world, and um, and there's a lot of a lot of problems going on, and a lot of a lot of uh, issues that need to be dealt with, and and I just think the Yanomama need somebody that they can trust or an organization they can trust, um, and I want to be part of that. And there's a lot of good people in Venezuela, a lot of good organizations that are helping the Yanomama, and I feel that as a Yanomama American, as as someone who is a member of that tribe but also is raised and educated in the Western world, I feel like I have this responsibility and duty to help them in a way that, that, uh, make, that uh, ensures that they aren't exploited and that they're taken care of and, and to help them understand some of the changes that are being brought to them. Um, and so if, if, if you want to help, uh, feel free to uh, go on Facebook, The Good Project. Um, also, uh, we have a website called uh, projectgood.net. You can uh, send me an email uh, or like the Facebook page on that. Um, we will be starting a fundraising campaign within the next few months. So if, if you'd like, you can feel free to uh, uh, donate. And um, it's not up and running yet, but we will let you know on our Facebook and on the, on the website when our, our fundraising campaign will be started. Well, thank you so much, David, for your time. Uh, we appreciate what you made for this community. Your history is amazing, really. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, from Telequento News and Tell All News, we will support you in all what do you need, okay? Believe in us. Thank if you, you need any support, we will be there, okay? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay.